What is the offense of the gospel? Christians are warned against giving offense unnecessarily uh, when interacting with those who are not yet believers. But we're also warned that we mustn't seek to remove the offense of the gospel, that there's going to be things in the gospel that have nothing to do with us uh, that unbelievers are going to find offensive. I think at the end of the day, what's driving uh, a need to find an offense in the gospel is, of course, guilt. Romans 1 is that place where uh, God tells us that all men everywhere are guilty, know they're guilty, and they suppress that truth in unrighteousness. They don't want to know it. They don't want to hear about it. And the proclamation of the gospel necessarily includes uh, the need that we have for forgiveness for our sins. And so there's an offense right there. But I would add uh, this important element to it. Not only will the unbeliever find it offensive to be confronted with the notion that they are guilty before the living God, but I think they'll also find it, oddly, uh, offensive, the idea that a person can be forgiven. I've mentioned before that I teach uh, ethics at a local community college here in town. And one of the chief goals that I, and I tell my students is at the very beginning of each semester, I say, look, what I want you to come out of from this class, I want you to come out with a deeper understanding of the reality that you don't know how bad you are. And that you, in turn, judge others more harshly than you judge yourself. Uh, that's just the beginning of uh, my goals for them. But it's important because I, I, I want them to see that reality. We have these two different standards where we judge ourselves on the basis of what we pretend are our good intentions, uh, while we judge others uh, operating under the assumption that their intentions are evil uh, and malicious. Well, uh, because of that, we want to believe that we've not caused anybody any harm. And we also want to believe that everybody that we have ever perceived that has done a harm to us is the devil. They're awful, terrible, horrible people who must be punished. And so when they hear this idea that not only can their sins be forgiven, which they think are small, but the sins of others who have wronged them can be forgiven. That's also a deep, deep offense. How in the world am I supposed to accept that the person who did this or that to me could be at peace with the living God? As if God's function is to make sure that nobody ever does us any wrong and that those who do suffer eternally. Well, <clears throat> that's the message of the gospel. You know, I feel that uh, when when uh, my internet critics love to, uh, some of them professing believers, many of them not professing believers, love to just throw up past sins in my face. It's like they can't fathom the idea that God would be willing to forgive me. And because they have the goods on me that I've done wrong, uh, they have the ability now to dunk on me and uh, dismiss anything I might have to say. Well, I have done grievous sins. Many of the things out there on the internet about me are actually true. Terrible things that I've done. But Jesus died for the terrible things that I've done. And Jesus forgives me, and my heavenly Father forgives me. The judge of all reality has forgiven me. Now, when you look at the world as worse than you, that's an offensive idea. When you look at yourself as worse than the world, <laughs> it's something you're willing and joyful and happy to embrace. I'm perfectly content for God to forgive all those who've done wrong to me because he knows that I need forgiveness from top to bottom. Don't ever 
remove the offense of the gospel. Because when you do, you remove the gospel.